Good evening, ma'am. How are you? Good evening, sir. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. You tell me what about you? Yeah, I'm always fantastic. Thanks for asking me too. So how's your day going so far? Uh, so far, so good. Thank you. Okay. So I'm really happy to see you on my YouTube channel. So as we are meeting for the first time, so would you mind introducing yourself, please? Yeah, sure. I'll do that. As you know, my name is Nutan and I'm from Mathura, which is in UP. And I'm a homemaker. I run a YouTube channel as well. If I tell you about my qualifications, then I'm graduate from commerce and I'm blessed with two kids. Thank you. Oh, that's great to hear about you. So we have one thing in common that even though I'm graduate from commerce, I did my bachelor's degree from Banaras in the university. But then from BCom owners accounting to I shifted to this master's in English literature. OK, so now do you want me to introduce myself? No, 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 please no. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK, thank you. So I was telling that we have same one thing in common that I was a commerce student. I studied commerce in 11th and 12th. Then I went to BHU for my bachelor's degree. But unfortunately, due to COVID-19, it was interrupted. So I was not able to do it in a good manner. Then I got interested in spoken English and I started pursuing this Master's of Arts in English Literature. So okay, nice. that's all about my studies. OK, so now I want to know about you. So you're a commerce graduate. Then the same thing. Why did you start it? Why did you start this spoken English thing and how did you get interest in it? See, it's my passion since my childhood, I can say. And if I tell you about uh, commerce, I'm graduate from commerce. So it's been years since I completed my graduation. It's been Approx 16 years. In oh 2008, my yeah, I completed my graduation. And after getting married, I anyhow, I just completed my final year. Then I did nothing for that. OK, uh, for uh, basically for higher education, I did nothing. And if I tell you about English, so since it's my passion, so I have been learning this English language and I have been talking. So it's been basically two months and a few days since then I've been, you know, talking with people. Earlier, I was just making my own videos, doing self-talk talking about things like all the things in the context of English language. Yeah. You used to create solo content. Now you started creating conversations with people. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So how do you feel uh, when you create solo content? When it comes to me, to be honest, it's not easy for me at all. I can do conversations. I can talk to people. When it comes to solo content, I'm always afraid that how I'm going to talk to myself, how I'm going to speak to camera. So how do you manage? these things I I started for my practicing I can say because I didn't have any environment so I didn't have I can say this much confidence to deal with people you know talking with them and dealing with them in English language so earlier I started thinking that I have to work on myself I have to speak English anyhow so earlier before that I started my channel I will start from the beginning I started my channel three years back so what I was doing that moment I was like start started it recording my voice just my voice after mm -hmm. some days later, I started making my own videos and uploading it on YouTube. So that's how I started. But uh, yeah, I can say uh, in, in my initial days, I used to fear of, uh, you know, camera initially, but not now. Yes, I, I don't have fear of camera or people, but when it comes to solo content, I'm not good in it because I have been doing conversations for like last three years almost. So I'm quite comfortable talking to people. But solo content, I do not get thoughts in my mind that what to speak. A lot of maybe I have to take uh, retakes again and again. So that's how I feel that how am I looking? How, how about my facial expressions and all these things? This happens. Yeah. So, OK, coming to another question, as you said that you come from a beautiful place that is Mathura. So tell me something about Mathura. Like, so was it your uh, just, you know, birthplace as well? You were born and raised in Mathura and got married in Mathura as well? Or just you come from any other district and married to Mathura? How is that? Basically, I'm from Gurugram, but uh, this is my in-laws place. Mathura is my mm -hmm. in-laws place. Yeah. And if I tell you about Mathura, so it's quite, I can say, sacred place. Very well-known uh, place. It is very pious. And uh, I, I can say more than 5,000 temples. Uh, and all are dedicated to Lord Krishna. So it's quite famous because of, uh, you know, tableau. You must ha have heard this tableau, Jhaki in Hindi. So all uh -huh. in all, each and every occasion, let's say in Navratri or uh, Ram Navmi or many kind of like uh, if the occasion is going on. So first of all, what's happening? 
uh, you know the tableau the jhaki all the time okay. you can yeah, you happen to watch a lot of things yeah so did you visit all uh, these places like barsana vrindavan nandgaon yeah. all these places did you visit yeah i have visited but not nandgaon but yeah barsana three or four four times and in if i tell you vrindavan uh, to have a vision of lord krishna basically the famous temple is prem mandir so i have i i think i have visited over i think 20 20 plus time oh my goodness yeah so far <laughs> 20 times because it's been long for you you been mathura right yeah absolutely you know whosoever like comes up at my place drops in and at my place and i have to go with them because they all all the time they are insisting me so let's go there and you have to go with us and all like was this so i that moment i have to you know just consider and i have to go with them and all so i just can't okay. you know refuse them yeah, that moment yeah so how was your feeling when you visited for the first time and just when you were bachelor when you were in gurgaon have you visited any time mathura from gurgaon to mathura no 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 for the first time when i got to know that uh, now you know i'm going to get married and all i was pursuing my second year so anyhow i completed my final year after getting married so you know the famous uh, sweet which is called peda so i used uh-huh. to love it i i used to very fond of eating peda uh-huh. okay so i didn't know i i never ever imagined that uh, that there will be a time and i will be staying in mathura as as i'm like my in laws place so it was i can say all of a sudden happened i was uh, i can say i was totally you know startled when i got to know that uh, i i have got you know engaged and all and all of this you know all of all of a sudden it it just happened yeah okay so then after marriage you visited all these places so before marriage yeah. you did not visit when you were no, in never ever never program ever. Yeah. Okay, so how was your experience visiting to all these places for the first time, especially Banke Bihari Mandir, and then just you know that Barsana? So how was your experience for the first time? How did you feel that vibe actually? Yeah, I can say vibes were very positive. You know, when we get to you know when we go these kind of things and we get to see our like our Lord Krishna, Lord Rama, or any deities, we believe in that. Okay, so. we feel very positive kind of i can say positivity automatically and start exudings from ourselves you know uh, by uh, just by seeing them just by seeing their like like picture their deity we feel like that it we have you know we have a, like a bond that that kind of positive positivity inside us and all of a sudden it just ex- excuses from our sides and we all of a sudden feel like you know so positive and all so i can say and earlier this was not the uh, i can say scenario scenario has been totally changed nowadays you know you can if you happen to come over here travel over here like you will find a lot of crowd on every single day but earlier this was not the case uh, there was that moment i can say that was so much you know serenity so much you know you will feel so much tranquility that okay you know this is so much peaceful place and all and people were very less earlier that was a time but only now, serious say, people were there in vrindavan who were quite into austerity and they were into yeah, devotion all, but now when social media came into existence yeah. now people go there to create reels and videos they visit temples Absolutely. before you would find people who were quite serious about devotion and devotional earlier. activities yeah, yeah exactly 20 and 30 years ago scene was totally different but now you see people they go there and take picture and just you know prem mandir mostly they take pictures and videos there or just many yeah. temples they go and make reels mm-hmm. so that's why it is Absolutely. famous now but that is not the real core of vrindavan vrindavan is something where you have to be there for devotional activities go there understand the meaning of life do not go there to take pictures and eat snack food or all these things what i think but the mindset has been totally changed you know people are yeah. you know totally totally inclined to go uh, you know just for to have a vision of lord krishna lord rama but what they are doing actually they are just you know making reels and they just want to it become a tourist for a uh, tourist place more more of a i would say now it is a tourist place not a devotional or people do not consider it going it for austerity and things but yeah i have seen people who do that uh, parikrama of govardhan actually yes, yes. so they do this for uh, maybe sometimes ha- some people have been doing it for years and years right yeah, so absolutely. that is the thing which is the it is known for but now people are taking in another way and they think it's quite easy and they they are taking it cheaply 
so they should understand the value of brindavan they say it if you go to brindavan if you do something good you get like you know 100 times multiplies but if you do something wrong all these material activities it you get like 100 multiplies like you know same as well so but people are not aware of all these deep things about uh, actually brindavan so they are not into it so yeah whatever it is just okay so yeah. another question uh, so yeah i asked about mathura and now i'm i'm going to ask you about this spoken english so what did you do to improve your spoken english what was the most important thing for you which helped you to improve your english if i tell you uh, the the key line is the more you speak the better you become so i am following this line this sentence okay and uh, like uh, literally i am doing that but if i tell you for uh, i think seven it's been seven or eight days and i was like uh, under the weather so out of uh, you know these kind of health issues i was not doing that you know i was not regular i was kind of i can say erratic but earlier what i was doing i was you know talking with people like on every single day five to six audio video both so that has magnified my confidence my fluency as well i would say but since i was not regular nowadays i am not regular so as a result i am uh, like uh, figuring it out that uh, something is missing something is lacking so i have to work on this so the key line is the more you speak the better you become and apart from this like uh, we must have some you know kind of knowledge of uh, basic grammar and vocabularies day to day vocabularies and yes if you know some like idioms or like a, a phrase is so this will work as a flavor in your communication skills so this this also really uh, like important thing i can say very vital yes exactly so how long have you been working on your spoken english particularly if i tell you as i earlier mentioned you i started my channel 3 years back but uh, for you know one year i just stopped not a single video i made uh, i can say because of getting demotivated again in third year i just bounced back started over making my own video thinking that i have to work on myself so i was doing that and as i told you two months it's been two months and a few days i like got connected with some skype group and since then i have been talking with people so i think just by talking with people i think i have gained a lot of confidence with the fluency like what was happening i can say eight days 10 days back what was happening with me whatever i'm thinking it was coming all the things in english i didn't have to you know earlier like uh, translate the things from my mother tongue into english no it was coming automatically in english like as i wake up in the morning things are coming in english not in hindi so what what was the reason behind that i can say just by talking just by immersing myself with this environment earlier i didn't have environment but i was working on myself i never ever i can say give up so yeah that has helped me a lot because i have been consistent i had the kind, kind of deter, uh, determination i can say tenacious i i was so much tenacious so yeah this was the reason exactly of course it's very important and i say to my students and i follow the statement that speaking comes from speaking because it is the matter of your this mouth muscles until yeah. unless you, this language is not going to be fit on your tongue you're not going to be comfortable while you're speaking yes reading is important listening is important and all those activities are important they are helping us to become better in this language but if you're not going to speak it would be there in your head but it would not come out from your mouth so you have to speak Absolutely. to people until or unless you're not going to speak you're not going to be comfortable in speaking so okay another question goes to you that is what about your hobbies what do you like to do whenever you get free time nowadays do you get free time or don't you get free time yeah sometimes i get free time so what i do and uh, if i tell you basically about my hobbies so my hobbies are singing reading cooking for different different items varieties and uh, sometimes earlier there was a time when i used to fond of painting but uh, i'm no longer doing that okay so you used to do paint when when you were in school right school yeah, in college in college time yeah earlier okay so what about the singing do you sing as well and yeah, what kind of songs of do you prefer and what kind of singer you are like bathroom singer professional singer there not are many professional. like you know specific uh -huh. uh, uh, no uh, not professional but yeah uh, since my childhood i have been this uh, passion as well within myself in bodily and whenever i feel like very good i'm so much ecstatic then i must sing that moment yeah but not oh, okay not so but you are living with your in law so how is that work nowadays you are comfortable singing even though do you live, live with your in laws or just only you are living in a 
family where your husband and kids are there actually both of my uh, in-laws uh, they have been passed away oh i'm sorry okay yeah. okay so now you have freedom to do it whatever you want otherwise in front of in-laws it's very difficult to follow your passion and hobbies i feel yeah, in happens. up i don't know no, how, a, yeah. yeah sorry to interrupt you as a like a homemaker you know we are being suppressed and we are taken for granted okay so many things happening and it's i think it's in the air in our society right people take uh, Uh, the like a uh, lady who is uh, uh, like just staying at home uh, and performing household chores they take them for granted uh, she is doing nothing she is staying at home what's more important thing she is doing and performing this kind of i can say uh, evil injustice is quite prevailing in our society we can't help yeah, exactly uh, in our society only what they think you have to do the work which you are ordered to do and apart from this you cannot follow your passion and hobbies you cannot watch watch the content which you like because maybe they will say what are you watching why are you listening to these songs a lot of interruptions in front of your in laws you cannot do a lot of things that's what i feel it happens here but it's suffocating environment for any i would say like human being or anyone even though if i would be in such situation where i would not be able to do something which i want to okay i'm ready to do work 24 by 7 but give me my own time right at least give me one or two hours so i can do something which i want to i can talk to my friends freely but it's not there in laws is something like you know they are encased where they are 24 by 7 observed by their actually in laws and everything so what i feel it's not good so they should get time for their own personal things right yeah people need to become mindful but you know as a, like i can say homemaker uh, uh, people other person they take us uh, for for granted and we need to you know stay and as a confinement like we are living the life in a confinement area so we mm, don't exactly. uh, you know we are allowed to go out there are many cases i can say yeah, but not with uh, not with myself now i feel like uh, um, so free so uh, i can say the liberty basically yeah now you have a freedom but at the same point of time you have responsibility now so you cannot go out all the time right but of course you are free enough you can go out you can buy things but when you got married maybe think about 2008 so 8 to 10 or 8 to 12 it was a i would think like it was a very difficult time for you because you would not be able to go out by your own choice you were totally dependent on your husband or maybe your brother like if they would come to you then they you would go back your hometown right yeah absolutely you know i just can't say things on this topic yeah exactly so that's how it is okay so you like singing painting and dancing do you like dancing as well yeah sometimes often i i do that and uh, yeah cooking different different of varieties i i like make whenever i feel like and sometimes uh, and when i am uh, like uh, i am feeling to make some things that i make and sometimes like uh, any members of my family they want then i definitely have i am to go in, into the kitchen i have to make for them different different varieties right indian food okay. uh, different kind of delicacies yeah yeah so sometimes as you said like you like cooking food but all 30 days are same i didn't get you please repeat it again the question is as you said you like preparing cuisines and food and many things right so but what do you think preparing food for 30 days so all 30 days are same do you give 120% to prepare or sometimes it is monotonous or you have to do it because it is your compulsion no 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 i never feel like that it's my compulsion and out of compulsion i'm doing that no i feel very good i can say vibrant i feel like uh, god has given me this chance so i feel very blessed very thankful for each and everything i'm getting so since i uh, i'm not a, like a narcissist person i'm not praising but i know that i cook very good food okay so yeah when it, it comes to make anything let's say chapati in so scorching heat people are like they are refrain from making chapatis right but i did it i whole heartedly like whether it i have to make 42 45 50 chapatis very thin beautiful chapatis i have to make so i make it whole heartedly when you know all of a sudden somebody drops in at my place and i have to go into the kitchen and make so you know it's kind of very difficult work you know in this kind of uh, like a uh, hot day summer day scorching heat is like uh, and all the uh, sorry humidity and then we have to go into the kitchen and make so this time i am also feeling good blessed that okay i am to do this so when i am to do this so why i do it with the compulsion with you know any 
feeling like the toxic things in my mind i do it whole heartedly that okay i am to do this i'm ready yeah yeah exactly that's a great thing but of course being a human sometimes it happens to us that sometimes we are under the weather or maybe we are just stressed out so we are tired so we feel some problem actually and if somebody comes if you are really tired in the afternoon and at afternoon if you are thinking about the rest but somebody comes to your house then you have to do it so even though if you don't want to do it then also you do not have any option that's what i'm asking okay i had a question yes uh, so related to preparing food i read a statement that of course like you know women and uh, they should be proud on themselves because they are independent male aren't basically male are dependent on like you know ladies if they will prepare food then they will get it otherwise it they are not uh, independent for sure because the ladies are working they come back they prepare or like you know food for them and for family so they are quite independent and they should be proud of themselves but when it comes to male we are dependent actually because uh, we need somebody who can prepare food because all of men are not really good in preparing food right absolutely yeah, yeah exactly and i'm i'm zero at it i do not know anything how to prepare <laughs> so i'm totally based uh, outside i go outside and i eat food because i feel the same point of time it takes a lot of time and i'm into other things and i want to invest my times for this a uh, time for skills and everything so that's how it is it depends on a person to person i have seen many people they are comfortably uh, doing it my friends but i cannot do it okay yeah okay so at last uh, i would say what is the piece of advice do you think people should follow to become better in english okay first of all i would say accept yourself the, the way you are accept yourself and the way you speak basically since we are talking in the context of english language so the way you speak because there are some people they just don't like their voice when they speak in english there are some people i i have come across those people so i am saying first of all accept yourself and believe in yourself and uh, you are not getting your goal in just one day or in just 30 days it takes time because it's a long process so you should not go in a hurry and all the time you know i'm not getting the fluency i'm not getting the confidence you have to basically at the end of the day you have to speak things so you have to put in efforts just be consistent don't you know just leave a single day for your relaxation that okay i'm not feeling doing so and i feel like reluctant so okay let's uh, leave it Uh, for another day and all so do your speaking practicing and if you, you have an environment then you know extract the maximum use of that i can say this yeah yeah exactly so it is very important to give you 120% and and have a stronger why that why you want to learn english that is very important if you do not have any stronger reason for it you are not going to uh, do practice for years and years after a few months you would feel though oh okay it's okay for me i can speak few sentences that's fine so if you have a stronger why that why are you doing it this is your passion or you want to provide your this good environment to your kids or you want to feel count and confident when you are going to such official places then only you can sustain and you can do practice otherwise i have seen a lot of people if they do not have a strong reason they leave after one or two months they feel like it's boring it's monotonous why should why should they put a lot of efforts for it yeah so exactly. they should have a stronger reason to start this journey right yeah, so okay absolutely. thank you so much when we thanks to you ma'am it was really thank nice you. talking to you and thanks for thank joining you. me today all the best and keep practicing keep making content as much as you can thank you thank you sir it was really nice talking with you thank you thank you